All right, a little bit of rollerblading news. Mikhail Witzemann has only gone and won the Blading Cup. <laughs> Surprising himself, and what did he win? He won the automatic washer, the tableware, the leather chair, two matching gold pens, and bully special prize, the MIDI Hi-Fi with CD. And this was after getting second in the intermediates, obviously turned it up a notch for the pros. Itsy bitsy little witsy won the Blade Cup, it was easy. Oi, oi. <laughs> The Europeans were out in force. <laughs> Danning had a stormer as well, man, winning the intermediate and the mini. Win, 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 win. And everything was looking very healthy, really good attendance. This pick is from Saturday night and at the premiere, look at Bauer. Top table sat next to Randy Spicer, sitting with all the big dons in rollerblading. Premier view. He's definitely got on those special memberships to Cineworld, so he gets the nice comfy chairs as well. Like there was action every day from the quad skaters, the bladers, the veterans didn't hold anything back. They were super keen as well. Bunch of old boys going mad with each other. And there was the under 17s, the future of rollerblading. Very positive. This moment was one of the highlights for me. Absolutely beautiful to see it. And big shout out to Kevin Lee, man. Not only is he training up the kids in Seoul, but getting them over to competitions like this, letting them see all the other skaters, inspiring them. It's absolutely amazing what he's doing. And I actually, I could do with him, like, helping me out on the grinds and that, giving me a couple of hands to hold on to while I learn my tricks. Team Ginger Chin were in full effect. I wish I could have been there with the boys. I noticed the Brearley brothers were there as well. They don't look like they've aged a drop, man. They've been cryogenically frozen or something. They've just been thawed out for the blading. Up. Looking good, like a pair of vampires or something. It was like a mini festival, man. It was like Blade Stock or something. Ben Magazine had put on a skateability workshop as well. Now, there was a few comments and comparisons made about the layout of the course. Bruh. Now, in their defence, and from what I understand of the quad podcast that I've been listening to, the last year's course wasn't great for quad skating, really. So a few changes were made there to like uh, accommodate for that. Then also, like we're always complaining that like the riders are never getting paid enough by the brands. And we always want to see them get paid more money. From what I understand, again, a lot of the money is like going into like making sure the winners get like a fair bit of cash in their pocket, man. Cash back. Which is great. I mean, I'd rather see that. I didn't really have a problem with the course. It's been really good seeing like the elite riders and what they can do with like a simpler course like that. Also, I think a lot of the space was dedicated to the trade stalls, which is really important. And I think that really helped to create like this kind of festival atmosphere. Anytime somebody started live streaming, I was frothing, man. I was chomping at the bit to see what was going on. It felt a bit like the World Cup for me, man. Action going all the time. It's a shame about the time difference. I was like watching it while I was actually in bed, like burning my retina with the phone screen, like oh, trying to catch the action. I reckon I could put a safe bet on there being a them skates moxie skate soon. The Spring Cup really did feel like a big moment in rollerblading. Feels like things are growing, everything's going in the right direction. A lot of positivity, a lot of great brands, a lot of great things happening in rollerblading, man. Just looking forward to more. Consume. John is fair good at marketing. The postal service must be absolutely screwing. I should, I wish you'd have offered him more, man. Stamps will be flying out of here if he was in control, man. After a couple of teasers had been posted up. They dropped the brain dead wizard PR80 frame with a limited run of 100 pairs. You've got bricks machine etched onto them with this like monster smashing his head out of the wall. <laughs> trying to have a look what's going on. I wonder if I could etch my own design in my wizard frames. I'll get Kevin Keegan on there and probably Spotty Dog or something like that. Honestly, I will love it. They then followed that up with the them skates, brain dead, wizard skating, full skate. You've got the premium version of it as well. You've got the them skates, brain dead, 80. Then you've got the them skates, brain dead, 58 millimeter. And that is a serious bit of kit. The brown kind of looks like, you know, a 70% cocoa dark chocolate, like lint or something, like dark chocolate excellence with the cream just like blended in there. Absolutely lovely stuff. Not everybody was massively into them. I did see a few like sick face emojis flying about the place. <laughs> but I guarantee you, they're the kind of people that in a couple of months time, they'll change their mind and they'll get into them, man. I'm getting to the age where milk chocolate can be a little bit too much sometimes. And dark chocolate starting to wink at me, especially the 70%. 
well, that's a good entry level, isn't it? That's why I like this colorway. There was also some new Brain Dead Them soft goods. There's a couple of t-shirts designed in there by Parker and Jason Rayner. That rabbit looks like a menace. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that Eclipse gear that was super popular in the 90s, man. You ever have any of that stuff? Yeah, it was proper good clobber, that. The 90s vibe is very much captured in this promotional picture. That's in-store only, by the way. Me and my beady crab eyes spotted a few new soft goods from Mesmer on one of the live streams. There was hats in there. Man, I'd really like to get my hands on a few of these. I really should have told somebody to, like, pick me up some. There was also a tea promoting their new tour. RV there yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's clever man, I like that. Really exciting to see a skate brand do something like that. I imagine the tour footage from this is going to be phenomenal man. I can't wait for it, I'm so excited. The last time there was any kind of tour it was the Them 909 tour, so that was in London and Manchester back at the, the beginning of 2020. That was amazing, really motivational, really great to see the skaters. And that's what we need to do, man. Get up and down the country, letting the kids see real life good skating. You can't be relying on people doing backflips to try and recruit people into rollerblading. That one kid who can do a backflip, like, oh yeah, nice one. The Mesmer gang are coming to town. Let's go and watch these guys. Everybody will be pumped, like. Hopefully with all travel restrictions pretty much like gone now, we can see more tours and stuff like this, because it's so important. Have we got a new Chris Farmer skate on the way? USD want to think about giving Vitzeman a skate, man. I'm trying my best to make this like a full-time thing. I'd say I was fairly dedicated to it. So if you like these videos, you can give me like a like, a comment, that really helps like sharing the stuff. I've also got a Patreon, starts at like three quid, few tiers in there, get your name up on the screen, exclusive content, that kind of thing. And it really does help me out. Deal with it, I've got a new collab wheel with the Bladies, 59mm, 90A, artwork by Gabby Velasquez. And it's one of those premium pours in the USA, so yeah top quality stuff in there. Not only a jump shoot, two ridiculously good skaters and like pretty handy with interviews, they've also got supplements now as well, man. Moving smart. You've got that ultra joint flex in there. You've got a little bit of CBD oil. You've got krill oil, multivitamin, platinum, turmeric. When I walk, it sounds like somebody's standing on a bag of twiglets or something, man. It's explosion. I'm absolutely knackered. I don't know how many miles left I've got on this. I mean, I've just had an organ removed from me, man. <laughs> it's tough out there, so I could do with some of these like oils and turmeric and stuff. Flavor Skate Company have got a new t-shirt on the way, designed by Elliot Feltner. You've got a bloke there tucking into a really juicy burger or something in there. You've got the wheels in there. There are a few wheels out there that do look like they'd be pretty tasty to eat. Them brain dead ones, they look a bit nice. I'd like a little bit of cake or something, or like a donut. Did you ever get that as well, when you see certain bits of soap and you think, that looks, that looks delicious. I eat at least two bars of soap a day. You have to stop yourself, otherwise you make yourself really, really ill. Don't go around eating soap. Actually, thinking about it, that's another way a company could diversify. Making soap, multi-purpose as well, like you clean yourself up with it, and you can also wax a spot. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna be amazing wax, but it's better than nothing. You can get two uses out of the thing. And also, like, there's definitely a few skaters that need to like, you know, move hygiene up the priority list a little bit, you know? few <laughs> whiffy lads out there, you know, sometimes at the end of the session, like, oh. Couple of results outside of the blading cup, obviously. This is kind of like a final score, isn't it? When the results come in. Ren Fujiwara took first place two years running at The Beast 2020. That is a superb name for a competition. The Beast. <laughs> what an absolute beast, man. You'd be delighted if you won that thing. I'm the beast. I'm the beast of 2022. Trophy has like no indication it's from rollerblading. Gives no explanation, just a big trophy. And at the bottom on the plaque, it just says, Beast 2022. Rob Dalton took best trick and best run in a unit one jam. He's a tall one, isn't he? Shout out to any tall rollerbladers out there who can make it look good. He does, he's got loads of style. It's tricky when you've got those really long limbs, man. It's a fair play to him. In the crowd of power comp, you had Sophia Ray winning the juniors, China Wirestall taking home the ladies, and Jimmy Sears winning the men's. I want to take a moment to say rest in peace to Luke Rapper, who unexpectedly passed away recently. My thoughts go out to all his family and friends. There's a GoFundMe that's been set up. I'll link it in my description. This is to cover the cost of Luke's unexpected passing. Watch. Them Skates and Brain Dead present JK in 5D Vision. <laughs> this is absolutely phenomenal, man. 
Starts out really industrial, kind of reminds me of Robot Wars. I half expect Craig Charles to pop out and say something utterly ridiculous. Humans replace the dinosaurs, but the next stage of evolution's Robot Wars. This is beyond anything I have ever seen before. I've seen nothing like it. It's so good, actually phenomenal effort. Bravo to everybody involved. I bet they've uh, flogged a few units after this promo, man. Beautiful promo. Superb edit. JK is just like laden with style. Send him in to make anything look cool and he will do a bang up job, man. Loads of control, creativity, style, like I said. Just makes the things look magnificent, man. I'm really excited, not just for like wizard skating, but also rollerblading, man, because like, You've seen it already, the effects of wizard skating, like filtering into aggressive skating, aggressive skating feeds into the wizard skating, both work together really well. It's great to see like the brands like coming together now like this as well. Flipping hell man, the future is bright. This weekend feels like one of the biggest weekends in rollerblading, certainly in a long while. And this is definitely a moment right here. Go and check this edit out, run the numbers up man. Flipping out. All right. The top quality video content continues. Basement have posted up Quick Draw, that's Quick Draw spelt without the vowels, and man, Curb Circle. <laughs> they are gonna have a field day with this one. It is littered full of gold curb content. That's probably them set for at least the next three months just off this edit alone. Phenomenal skating, really creative, really fast feet, really technical. Loads of like set slides in there, parallel slides. There were some points where I just laughed because I didn't know what to do. My body didn't know how to react to it. I was just like, what? So good, man. Phenomenal stuff in there. Few hints of like Scott Blackmore in there as well. I feel like he's had a little bit of an influence on this. Well, he's definitely like stuff in there I feel like I've seen Scott Blackmore do. Man, and he's one of my top favourite skaters ever. So, and so are these boys. Brilliant video, man. Go and watch this one, like I said, just like bang full of creativity, really like setting the trends, like always, they've always got like a new direction, or there's always something new that they're into, and they just do it at such a high level. If you find yourself tickled by a little bit of wizard skating and you fancy a bit more, you should go and check out Grey Light by Pop Show. Really good skating in there, I love the way it's shot, like dark, eerie kind of atmospheric and moody scenes in there and some really good skating as well let it inspire your aggressive skating even if you're not into the wizard it's been quite an exciting weekend you know sometimes when you have a lot of excitement you can hit a bit of a lull and you're like oh man what else is there to look forward to there's loads to look forward to chance of rain four is nearly ready to go carter put up a trailer for it man this looks really good the series is phenomenal this is going to be phenomenal I can't wait. The Borkland Zoo lot have put up a new edit called Muscle Cat. When I put this into YouTube, I got a little bit distracted with all these other videos about really big, <laughs> muscly cats. There's this one called Buff Cat, like, he's huge, like, he's proper yoked. So watch that instead. There is obviously loads of really good action from the Blading Cup. Just go on the Blading Cup's page. Butter TV posted up some really good bits as well. And Soul Skaters have got some really great footage of the under 17 showing us that the future is bright. You've got Siowa in there, Bioli, you've got J1, you've got O2, O5, Essel. Like I said before, but honestly, I can't give them enough credit. Kevin Lee is doing amazing things. These kids are absolute rippers, man. They're unbelievable. The future is very bright, though. I'm also keen to see Megan Schaefer's debut street part in Dogwater. I know they premiered it on Saturday, there's a trailer. I couldn't actually find the full thing, so like, if anybody knows when this drops, let me know, because I'm keen to see this. Before we get tucked into this, I want to make my intentions clear. I would love to see this problem resolved and for like all parties concerned to be happy with the outcome. So at the end of this, I'm going to offer some solutions from my point of view. I'm going to start by going through what happened. I'm going to give my logical take on it. And then, you know, take that as you will. That being said, buckle up. For the first time in my life, I'm afraid. I'm neither the prosecution or the defence. You are the jury. We're all the jury. Right? We can come together and talk about this. Isn't we? 
All the quad events at the Spring Cup were mixed. Montre being a sponsored quad skater, entered himself into the advanced street comp. He's registered, he's paid, everybody knows who he is, and everybody knows what he brings to the table. He gets himself into the final, puts on a good show, loads of amplitude, loads of really good tricks in there, the crowd are loving it, the other skaters are loving it, he's motivating the other skaters as well. Having watched that quad street comp final, a fair few times. If somebody came to me after that event and was like, right, who have you got your money on winning that? Who do you think won that? And I'd say, I'm not a gambling man, but in this situation, if I had to risk my money, I'd be putting it on Montre and saying that he won there. Everybody else was great, it was really exciting, but I think Montre was a level above everybody else. Now, allegedly, looking at his stories, Montre was told he actually won the thing. I mean, the judges probably shouldn't be telling people that beforehand anyway. A real stinker is telling somebody they've won, and then they don't win. Yoink. 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 Allegedly, he was then told he couldn't win because the roller skating community would be, you're telling somebody based on an opinion that what they've done isn't worth as much as if this person wins. I'd say he was fairly about the community. Montre is a legitimate quad skater. There was definitely times, and it's possibly even true now still, that he was doing more in quad than he was doing in rollerblading. And he's even promoting quad skating at purely inline contests as well. I mean, you're leaning into the theory that like, if somebody's really, really good, everybody else will stop. But like, historically, that is not the case, is it? He wasn't best pleased. He took to social media to ask people if they thought he was robbed. A lot of the chat I've seen outside of this in the rollerblading and the quad community have both said uh, they thought he was robbed. Purple pickle juice raises the point this community shouts inclusivity until it's an inliner showing TF out on quads and showing us the realm of possibilities of what can be done in this new sport. If anybody looks at Montre and only sees an inliner and not paying attention, you're gatekeeping how people practice. What's that truth? Because he was fairly annoyed, he posted up a video of him throwing his second place medal into the beach. Get out of here! That's disrespectful. Do you buy your thumb on us? Montre admits it's disrespectful. No, sir, did I buy my thumb on you, sir, but I buy my thumb! But there's a few key things that like happened before that which we can't ignore when viewing this. It doesn't justify it, but we've got to try and look at as much of it as we can. Then too easy, reigning flyweight champion, undisputed, Gregory Preston jumped into the ring and threw a jab in. You shouldn't have entered the thing in the first place. And topped it up with a funny video of Crane with beating up some kids. If you don't want people in something, it lands with the organisers first to set some rules and regulations and some sort of standards. If you put a party on Facebook and a load of people turn up, <laughs> who's to blame? <coughs> oh my goodness, the drama's getting me. The thing was advertised as a competition. He represents a quad brand. He entered legitimately. But it's being put forward that like maybe morally he shouldn't have actually entered knowing how much better he is. By saying that he shouldn't have entered, implying that he's really good, also then adds more weight to like the odd decision that he didn't win. Some people will take that as an admission that a dodgy decision was made and he's been like done over. If the quad skating community want to get into competitions, him not winning and in the way that it happened, allegedly being told that he had, and then being told, well, no, you can't win, compromises the legitimacy of it. I think it'd be hard to argue with the opinion that Montre, amongst other skaters, make quad skating look really, really exciting. And that's gonna bring people in. There's all different ways like to attract people into like, a sport or a hobby, pastime, whatever you wanna label it as. There's all different ways, you know? You can have a more relaxed, chill vibe approach, or you can have people who are like really pushing hard for like the trick style of things. I think removing him from competition actually undermines the rest of the community. You're basically saying he's too good for you. But what about those who want to compete? You could never legitimately say you were the best. This is just my opinion. I think there's a few questions and a few possible solutions there. Question. Do you want to go down the competition route? Or would you prefer like a jam format? And then there's no issue with like who won basically. It's just like a really good time. If you are going down the competition route, should there be different categories? It feels like there's a fair few things that could have stopped this from happening. It's definitely should have gone onto social media. And I really hope all the parties involved get together and sort this out amicably. Huge thank you to all my patrons, your name's up on the screen, you are a bunch of champs man. Couldn't do this without your support. Here's another video you can watch, I've got a load of ideas for some more videos I'm going to do soon. 
like comment subscribe all that good stuff and i'll uh see you in a bit spotty dog <laughs>